Remember, being perfect is not the goal here. All we're trying to do is be more prepared than we have been in the past so that we can build more consistency in the future. Hey, what's going on? Shane, it's Shane Hubbard Fit. And today I wanna to talk to you about how to build healthy nutrition habits without counting calories. This is what I sort of call my anti-calorie counting nutrition plan and this is some of the tips that I use with my clients. So you're going to be getting a sneak peek into some of the things that I do with my nutrition coaching clients to help them improve the nutrition, lose body fat and build healthy habits. All right, so we're going to be talking not only about some of the ways that you can improve your nutrition with these six tips, but also some portion guidelines so you know exactly how much food you need to be eating from different sources in order to lose body fat, feel great and have tons of energy. So to start things off, let's go ahead and go over these six tips, starting with protein prep. So protein preparation, so cooking proteins in bulk, is probably the number one thing that I do with every single client because a lot of meals that are made by other companies are going to have less than ideal amounts of protein. Not always, but in most cases because protein is expensive. So if you do the work by prepping your protein sources ahead of time, you'll not only save money, but you'll get the amount of protein you need each and every time. This can make staying consistent with protein intake very easy to do. Like I mentioned before, you wanna cook your proteins in bulk. So whether that's chicken or salmon or beef, whatever protein source that you wanna use, if you cook it in bulk, you'll have plenty throughout the week. Now, I highly recommend that you pick two different protein sources to have a little bit of variety. So that maybe like on Monday you can have one, on Tuesday you can have another. And being able to mix it up like this is going to make it a lot easier to stay consistent with because you have enough variety without putting a ton of extra work into it. Some of my favorite ways to prep my proteins in bulk is going to be grilling things like chicken and steak and fish or cooking them in the oven. Sometimes I'll even use a crock pot for things like pulled pork or you know, shredded chicken. So you can pick whatever method works best for you and the utilities that you actually have. Again, the oven is probably the easiest thing to do because once you put it in, you can set it and leave it, set a little reminder, go and check on it and it's done. So meal prepping things like chicken and steak and beef and, and all these different meat and protein sources can be really easy once you get the hang of it. Now, people often ask me what sort of seasonings they should use and I always say, use the ones you like. If you like to use garlic, use garlic. Don't be afraid to use some salt on your proteins. You can even look up healthy marinade recipes that use certain oils and flavorings and seasonings so you don't have to think about all the different things you need to use. But if you don't wanna go out and buy a bunch of different seasonings, just use the ones you already have at home. I like to use herbs and spices because they're usually low in calories and it makes it a lot easier to flavor your meats. All right, so now that we've talked about protein prep, we're gonna be talking about veggie bulk prepping now. So this is another one of those foods that most people do not get enough of. And I can pretty much guarantee you're not getting enough veggies right now. So this is going to be a great tip for you to start getting into eating more vegetables. So just like protein prep, veggie prep done in bulk can be actually pretty easy. One of the easiest ways to get this done is to buy your vegetables frozen so they preserve for longer and then put them on a sheet pan or put them in a crock pot or put them in a pot on the stove to steam and all you have to do is heat it up and save it and you have a ton of vegetables that you can eat throughout the week. One of my favorite ways to do veggie prep with either fresh or frozen vegetables is to put them on a sheet pan with a little bit of olive oil, some of my favorite seasonings, and then throw that in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes depending on the types of vegetables. And I have literally a week's worth of vegetables in less than an hour. And just like with the proteins, if you cook them in bulk, you have tons of different vegetables you can eat. And you can season them pretty much the same way that you season your proteins. You can use herbs and spices and salts and you know some little bit of olive oil and, and just mix it up and get creative and have fun with it. You can pick any sort of vegetable that you want. Make sure that when you're doing this, that you're doing something that's on the low starch or low carbohydrate end of vegetables. So your broccolis, your cauliflowers, your green beans, your Brussels sprouts, because we're gonna be talking about carbs in the next tip. All right, so let's talk about number three, which is carb prep. So the types of carbs that I'm talking about are your starchier types of carbohydrates and fruits, okay? So one of the cool things about carbs is that a lot of them are actually easy grab and go. So think about bread, for example. If you had to create a meal from what we have here on the list, 
you might have a protein source. So let's say you have you know, a piece of steak or some red meat. Then you have some veggies. It's a little medley that you made in the oven. Let's say that you didn't have time to prep carbohydrates. No big deal. You could include something like a bread or a pasta, something that's a little more processed, but still easy to grab and go or use when it comes to your carbohydrate sources so you can have a well-rounded meal. Remember, it's not about being perfect when it comes to nutrition. It's just about being prepared. So when it comes to prepping carb sources, I like to do the exact same thing with protein and veggies. I like to cook them in bulk, or I like to buy something that's ready to go in bulk so I can just use it throughout the week. Some great examples of bulk cooking carbohydrates would be things like potatoes and beans and rices and even pastas if you like pasta. Well, let's be honest, who doesn't like pasta? So as you've probably noticed, the top three tips all come down to preparation, and that's truly where you're going to get the most benefit is when you decide that you are going to spend some time prepping food. Now, if you're looking at this list and you're looking at the top three and you're going, I don't know if I can do all that right away, don't worry about it. That's why it's listed out. At the very least, start with protein prep. Don't worry about your veggies right away. Don't worry about your carbohydrates. You can buy those things. Maybe you buy a prepackaged salad or maybe you buy you know rice that's like minute rice. And then once you get your protein prep down, cool, you've gotten that as a habit, it's sort of an autopilot thing you do every week. Now let's do the same thing with veggies. You've added a little bit more work, but again, you've got this protein on autopilot. Now you can do vegetable prep and it's gonna be a lot easier to implement the two. Then maybe you know one to two months later, you got all of that down. Now it's about carb preparation. Now you can build in some more whole food based carbohydrates that you make at home. Or maybe you still outsource this to something that's a little bit more convenient for you. Remember, being perfect is not the goal here. All we're trying to do is be more prepared than we have been in the past so that we can build more consistency in the future. All right, so number four is gonna be talking about frozen meals. Now, frozen meals are great for, you know, like for instance, something that's happened to me is that I'll get to the end of the week, I've eaten all of my meal prep and it's like Thursday night or Friday at lunch and I'm like, well, crap, I don't have any more meal prep, what am I supposed to do? So what I've been doing is I've been buying healthier frozen meals and there are quite a few companies out there that are doing their due diligence and making healthier frozen meals that all you have to do is either microwave or oven cook some of these meals to prepare them and eat them. So frozen meals can be a great sort of substitute for the days where you either eat all of your meal prep or maybe you're just sort of tired of prepping the same meals, you can have some variety in these frozen meals. Now I have a couple of recommendations this is one of my favorite ones. This is a Healthy Choice Power Bowl. Healthy Choice Power Bowls are some of the best macronutrients when it comes to proteins, carbs, and fats, and ingredients And I've been able to find at your local grocery store. I found this at Walmart, so you can find it pretty much anywhere. Another one that I've been trying out, I'm not really sure if I like it yet, but maybe you'll like it, is these Banquet Mega Bowls. They're pretty good. They're higher in protein than a lot of the other ones that I've seen in the past. Some of the ingredients aren't you know, super spectacular, but again, we're not trying to be perfect, we're trying to be consistent, and we're trying to be better, so this can be a great substitute. What I would say is try them out, see which ones you like. They'll usually have four or five different flavors of all these different types of frozen meals. So you know, try them out, if you don't like them, no big deal, just don't buy it again. If you do like them, start stocking your freezer with them when you run out of your meal prep or you want some more variety. One of the ones that my fiance gets and that I've actually started getting sometimes are these cafe steamers. This is also made by Healthy Choice. These are pretty cool because they have you know, some pasta options that are really good. So if you like pasta, this is a good option for that. And they taste pretty good. You know, they're not gonna be you know, Italian restaurant quality, but the idea is that it's something that you enjoy, it's something that you like, and it gives you some variety so that you can stay consistent. All right, so we're all the way to number five, which is big ass water bottle. Bring water with you to work or bring something you can refill with water to work so that you get enough water every single day. Now this is something that I know for a fact you are not getting enough water. So make sure you get enough water. And in the beginning, if you have to flavor your water a little bit, do it. Whatever gets you to drink more water. Flavoring your water with something like fruit or a flavor pack is much better than not drinking any water at all. Yes, would it be ideal to drink just pure water? Sure, but again, we don't live in an ideal world where everything is handy dandy, perfect and convenient. We have to do what makes our lives a little bit easier and yet we can stay consistent with the pattern. So if flavoring your water works for you with either fruit or a flavoring pack, 
do that. I'm totally cool with that. I think that's a great place to start, especially if you're someone who has a tendency to not drink enough water. Now, I totally get that it's annoying to have to get up every hour to go to the bathroom, but it's the little prices that you'll pay for big returns and big gains in your health and your healthy habits and losing body fat. All right, so number six and our last one is understanding the difference between stomach hunger and head hunger. So just so you know, right off the bat, cravings start in the brain. Hunger starts in the stomach. So if you're sort of thinking that you would like chocolate, right, that's a craving. That's not necessarily a need. Now, I'm not saying you have to always ignore your cravings. I'm certainly not saying that. But it's important to understand the difference between actually physically being hungry and needing nutrition and simply just wanting to eat food, whether you're bored or you have intense cravings. Now, I've already talked about how to handle intense cravings in prior videos, so make sure you check out that video if you wanna learn more about how to reduce intense cravings. But when you understand that you have stomach hunger, when you can differentiate the difference between brain hunger and stomach hunger, it's gonna be a lot easier to know when you're actually hungry and when you should eat. Now, I get questions all the time of when's the best time to eat, when should I eat based on this, do what works best for you, okay? There is no specific timing of food, you know, unless you're like a, a bodybuilder or a figure competitor, you don't need to worry about meal timing as much as you need to focus on getting the right amount of calories, getting the right types of foods to make losing body fat easier and to keep your calories at a moderate amount. So practice being hungry through your stomach instead of through your head. The more you can get in tune with when your stomach is hungry, when you feel that sort of growling sensation, let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and see how you feel. And if it stays consistent, if you're consistently feeling that stomach hunger, it's a good time to eat. Okay, cool. So we've talked about the six tips that can really, really help you out with building better nutritional habits for not only feeling better, but also losing excess body fat. Let's go ahead and go on to our portion guides now. Now I want you to pretend this is your plate, all right? So on your plate, you've got three different categories. We already sort of talked, them, talked about them over here, but you got three different categories. You got your protein category, you've got your starch category, and you've got your veggies category. Now these are the portion breakdowns that you want to aim for. Again, remember, we're not trying to be perfect, we're just trying to be more consistent and have some targets so we understand on average what we should be, what we should be doing to portion out our food. So over here in the top left, we've got protein. So if this is my plate, I want one fourth of my plate to be covered with protein. Now, depending on the person, this is going to be one to two servings of protein, all right? If you have a little bit more protein than you need, don't worry about it, it's not that big a deal. In fact, I'd rather you um, prioritize getting more protein than less. So you can always save it for later if you need to. So one fourth of your plate should be protein. You can also think of it as 25% of your meal. It should be from a protein rich source. So things like chicken breast, chicken thighs, fish, you know, salmon, uh, you know, red meats, whatever type of protein that you like to eat. Then the other fourth of your plate should be starch. So starch is a type of carbohydrate. We've talked about this in the past. Things like beans and potatoes and rice. That should take up about one fourth to 25% of your plate. So these two servings are, are sort of, they're not necessarily equal, but they take up equal amounts of space on your plate. Now the other half of your plate should be low starch, low carbohydrate vegetables. So things like broccoli and cauliflower and green beans and eggplants and tomatoes and Brussels sprouts and things like that. By doing this, you are going to have a much tighter control and an easier way to manage your calories in these four different categories. Now, a question that I typically get about this plate is where does fruit fit on this? And I like to say that fruit is one of those foods that if you were truly over consuming it, you'd be the first person on earth to overeat fruit and get fat as a result. So don't worry about how much fruit you're getting. But if you're curious about what category it fits in, it sort of can overlap between starch and veggies depending on the fruit. So again, don't worry about it. If you want to do something like protein, starch, vegetables as uh, let's say another quarter and then fruits as another quarter, you could totally do that. You could just include you know, your fruits and veggies into one category. Don't overthink it too much. It's, you don't need to get to that point right, right, right away. You're, 
sort of at the beginning stages. Make it as simple as possible. And I, I promise you that you're not gonna overeat fruit, okay? So don't worry about that. Another question I typically get is, where does fats fit in in this category? Like maybe you're somebody who eats a higher fat nutrition, and that's fine. You can eat higher fat in your meals. What I would do is I would make protein stay the same, so one fourth to 25% of your plate, cut this fourth into an eighth, so one eighth is starch, one eighth is fat, and keep the vegetables, okay? So you could do it that way too. That way you're getting fats, you're getting starches, you're getting proteins, and you're getting vegetables. Now also remember that most proteins, unless you're getting extremely lean versions of your proteins, are going to have some fats in them. So what I've seen make a lot more sense for those that are just starting off who don't wanna get super nitty gritty with the details is protein and fat are sort of included in the same category. Then you have starch over here and then you have vegetables. So if you're just getting started, buy sort of like a leaner cut of meat that's still going to have some fat in it. You're still gonna get your fats from your protein sources. You're gonna get your starches from you know beans, rice, potatoes, quinoa, that's another favorite of mine and then you're gonna get low starch, low carbohydrate vegetables is gonna be half your plate. So this is really important if you're not interested in counting calories because what it's going to allow you to do is just look at your portion sizes and have a pretty good idea of how many calories you're consuming and if you can stay consistent with that, you are going to start dropping body fat very easily. All right, so that is my video for today. Thanks a ton for watching. I really do appreciate your time. If you wouldn't mind, before you go, hit that thumbs up button so that I know that you enjoy this video. And then leave me a comment down below if you have any questions on anything I talked about today. I'd love to help you out even further, make this really, really easy to understand. And then if you'd like to see more videos just like this one where I teach you how to make your nutrition very, very easy, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get a notification when new videos come out every week. Dress up like ladies and burn them the dirty 380s. Then they come to kill our babies. That's all out. I got cats that blow the wall out. Clear them all out. Look at my history. I'm trying to see what's different from that guy in the rich and me. The only thing I see is.